happening, everyone? Man, I just can't stop streaming, Cam. This is uh, I'm uh, it's, it's Thursday. It's Thursday, and tomorrow I have one more stream, and then I'm taking a break in the weekend, probably Monday too. You never know, though. It's hard not to stream these days. Exciting stuff. I mean, I streamed all through the bear market. Did not take any time off, and uh, you know, channel is new, obviously, and all that stuff too. But man, do we have a good one today? Uh, yesterday kind of blew the lid off everything when Pulse Chain launched during me and Sloth and Axis stream. Crazy, crazy timing, fantastic. Got the stream got added to the Hall of Fame on Pulse Two. Uh, shout out to shout out to them. Shout out to uh, Axis and Sloth for making that stream amazing. But today. Security AMA number six. I did five or six of these. I'm pretty sure this is number six. That's what it's named. That's what we're going with. And today you got Ben Dubard on here. We talk about hardware wallets, and going over some nuance with them. So get your questions in on uh, on Trezor Ledger, all that stuff. And we'll be talking about going deep on a few different other topics too. VPNs, um, their use and misuse. I got, you know, if you, people have been watching before, they've heard my security commentary. I have some very strong opinions on, on them. And we'll be talking about, uh, what else? OPSEC. We'll be talking about uh, just, again, avoid how to avoid getting hacked. This is something that you're literally, I don't think you're going to hear. I've never heard anyone else talking about it. I come from a security background. I've been doing this stuff for like a decade professionally. Uh, my job has been to like study it, implement it, break it, find out the real solutions. So that's the type of value I can bring uh, to the community. So I really do think this, you know, I can bring that kind of unique value uh, and, and really tell you like what's up security wise. I've only been doing crypto security for like maybe a year or two years, something like that. Really like kind of immersing myself into it. And I wrote some blogs to, that I've shared before. I'll probably share during the stream that go over all the different, how to not get hacked by dApps and malicious smart contracts and airdrop stuff and all that too. But, you know, my, uh, a lot of my expertise is in server security, uh, client security, like how to your own computer, use a Mac, not Windows. We'll get into that as well. So it's going to be a great stream, everyone. We're, I think it's going to be action packed. Get your questions in the chat. We'll get to them when we can. Without further ado, let's bring it in. Ben Dubard, welcome back to the show. Hello. Welcome. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah, man. It's, uh, you were on the DeFi mindset maybe a month or two ago. And uh, yeah, that was that was a uh, that us uh, crypto kindness talked about RH ecosystem, uh, just uh, the ethos around true DeFi, and uh, that was a fun stream. So yeah, how you been, man? What, what, I've been uh, keeping up with you and Furu, and enjoying <laughs> uh, enjoying the bro down streams. And actually, you guys are interesting. Uh, you talk about a you know usually I don't tune into a lot of the just like you know having a beer stream, but you guys are actually talk about cool stuff so i was actually I was, I was entertained not that i was surprised or anything you guys are not boring obviously but i i like tuning in to your all's type of type of stuff too because not only cover crypto you cover a lot of just uh, what's going on live we talked about miami i can blow up the chat it, it, it's really fun so yeah well, how, how you been man I've been good. Yeah. Uh, so that's my moon interview series where I yeah. have been bringing on people just to talk about whatever. So I had a wild SJ on and we just talked about, mm -hmm. I learned a lot about her. She used to do commercial acting. I thought that was really cool. Really interesting just to learn about that. Uh, me and Maddie Allen talked about crypto and mental health. I really enjoy kind of like the mental health side of crypto and uh, thinking about hacks and the long-term staking and the long-term mindset and how, that's not only beneficial for your mad gains, but also for your, your mental health. So that was a really awesome one. And then, yeah, Furu came on and I go on Furu's channel a lot. He, we're like friends, you know, um, before we were streaming, we weren't friends, but he had me on his channel and we've kind of just become friends. We talk about, uh, you know, strategies for videos and that kind of stuff. And so that was a fun, fun little moot review where we just talked about whatever, but, um, yeah, happy to be here. And this is a super important topic, um, especially with mainnet seemingly any day now. We got our Raise last the roof. <laughs> Raise the roof. It could be minutes away. Uh, <laughs> could be right now. Uh, yeah, it could have. Yeah, yeah, it could have happened from when I just said that. It could have been seconds seconds away. Yeah. But uh, so security is super important, and I get a lot of people they they don't understand why they can't just use MetaMask. Um, you know, MetaMask is really simple. It's easy. You just click a button and you do stuff. I get it. Cause that's how I started out. Even when I just had a hardware wallet sitting there and then 
one thing I noticed people get confused on, okay, I have a hardware wallet, so I don't need MetaMask anymore, right? Well, actually, your hardware wallet then connects to MetaMask, and you have a dummy wallet in front that is still not safe, but your safe wallets are behind the dummy wallet. And when I say that, and you don't know what I'm talking, and you haven't done this, it's very confusing. So I'm going to, so I thought, you know, we were going to start out and I was just going to show that real quick. Uh, or did you have stuff you wanted to say first? Yeah, I, I just, yeah, well, I just wanted to kind of set the frame, the conversation too, of the, the main benefits. So, uh, and then we'll get into your, your, uh, your quick demo, but Cool. everyone talks about, you know, hardware wallets, you always like kind of just almost feel like they yell it at you. Like, do it, do the hardware wallet. And you're like, Oh, that sounds secure. It's a hardware. It's like, what is it, like stores my seed securely or something, right? Like it's, it's one of those things like you really need to understand what you're even using it for. Uh, and it's, or you won't really be into using it, right? Like why doesn't everyone have a hardware wallet when it's clearly a superior solution than just using MetaMask? Well, they cost money. Uh, it costs effort. You have to set it up. You have to learn this stuff. Why would you do any of that if you don't know how it actually protects you, if you have suspicions of it? If you watch videos online of how when they get stolen, uh, people can dump seed birds from them. There's plenty of vulnerabilities in hardware wallets too. They're not perfect. However, they, they give you a big edge. So just want to mention a couple benefits, uh, just, to, just to some people that can understand why they're important, why you should use them, all that. So the two main benefits, and I'm sure there's more and other nuance as well, but the two main things you can take away from having a hardware wallet that you don't get with just having MetaMask is they generate your seed words offline off your computer. So they can't just be stolen if your computer gets hacked. So, you know, usually MetaMask, whatever you use to generate uh, your, your seed words, your private key, your access to your wallet, it's usually on your computer. If there's a Trojan on your computer, malware, otherwise, or if any point it gets compromised and they get access to it, seed words gone. So when you set up a hardware wallet, uh, you generate the seed words and then you usually write them down in like a cold storage type solution and don't put them on your computer. And that, uh, that keeps it from key loggers and all the different malware that can happen. So seed words, uh, security is one. And then the other one is it's basically like two FA on your wallet. So it makes transactions require, uh, some sort of physical touch connection, button pushing, uh, maybe a pin to go along with it as well. You can enable pin on these devices. And so even if someone does put malware on your computer and they try to do transactions, if they don't physically have access to your device and they can't press that button and they don't know that pin, then the transaction is not going to go through either. So basically 2FA for your device and uh, prevents your seed words from getting compromised if you have someone snooping on your computer already. The two main benefits, uh, but we'll get into the different nuances later. Just want to set the stage for anyone if you have any questions, put them in the chat. Ben's going to get into the demo now. Yes, well said. So, yeah, like uh, RH Max was saying, with the MetaMask, they show your seed phrase on your computer screen, uh, which right away is not the best because you could have malware. Some guy uh, could be watching your screen. Who knows? Um, hopefully, even though it's shown on your computer screen, it's not safe. You write it down on a piece of paper, but even then, you're seed phrase is still stored within MetaMask. And also your MetaMask seed phrase is 12 words while your hardware wallet seed phrase is 24 words. So there's a lot of ways that if you are just using MetaMask, you're kind of setting yourself up to get screwed. And I've had friends who, one friend really who didn't get a hardware wallet, wrote down his MetaMask seed phrase and he thought, oh, I'm doing everything correct because I wrote it down on a piece of paper. No one could have possibly seen it. Um, then one day his money was just gone. He doesn't really have any idea how, but, uh, so I'm going to just get into it and show you, go ahead and share my screen. Shout out to right. Key, one of the best devs in the ecosystem. Maximus Dow for the win. All right. So, uh, you can see this, this is a MetaMask account. So I made this account, uh, you know, they showed me my seed phrase on the screen. This is a MetaMask. I'll open it up up here because this is how most people interact with it. But if you go to here and you go to settings and then you go to uh, security and privacy. Can't, can't see your browser on this one. Just see the desktop. Oh, are you serious? Yeah, you may need right, to share your actual browser if you're, if you're going to show that. Okay, hold on. I know it's confusing on StreamYard sometimes. There we go. 
All right. Now you can see it, correct? Yes. All right. <laughs> Phew. Okay. So uh, you can see the MetaMask pop up up here, the tiny one. Or not. Yeah, we can see it pop up. Okay. So uh, you have a MetaMask and you wrote down the seed phrase and you think you're safe, even though it flashed on your computer screen, but you're like, oh, I don't have any malware on my computer, so I think I'm good. But if you go to the settings and then here, there's this giant red button that says reveal secret recovery phrase. And so this is a wallet. I don't care. Like, I'm going to show you guys this. The password is RH Max Tutorial, all caps. Of course, I'm breaking all the rules of what is okay to prove the point that the security phrase for this dummy wallet that has no money in it is literally just sitting in your browser. So if you have a lot of money <laughs> and a MetaMask that isn't secure, you're at serious risk. Um, and I want to just go ahead and say, if you have hex stakes on a MetaMask in their long term, you can't just switch those hex stakes to a new wallet unless they're maybe like a uh, Hedron uh, HSI. HS yeah, so I have, we're not going to, get too into that today but i do have a video about that can you see this channel or this yeah. okay so i have a video showing how to do that but anyway so i'm going to show you guys i have a ledger nano s the tiny one here can you see me as well as my screen or you can only see my screen right now now we can see both of you all right so so how do you add a so you, so let's say you you bought a hardware wallet okay Setting up a hardware wallet's really easy. Um, you know, there's there's tutorials all over YouTube on how to set up a hardware wallet, like how to get it out of the package and set it up. But the instructions that come with it are actually really, really easy to follow and really well done. You know, when I've helped people get into crypto, they never really have problems actually setting up a MetaMask account and setting up a hardware wallet. Now, don't just jump the gun and go buy a hardware wallet right now because we're going to talk more about it later in the stream. Like, Always buy it from the official website, ledger.com, treasure.io. Make sure you're downloading MetaMask at metamask.io. And of course, when you get your seed phrase from Ledger or Trezor uh, from the device, you write it down. You don't take a picture or store it in a text message or you know, send it to your cousin or something to keep it safe. <laughs> so um, anyway, mm -hmm. I, I expect that this is the, the point where I think most people get tripped up is, okay, how do I, how do I add my ledger to MetaMask? Um, so I've, I've entered my pin on the ledger. I have the Ethereum app downloaded. Uh, and I go and I select the Ethereum app on the ledger. It says application is ready. I then open in MetaMask here, the little circle. I, I click connect hardware wallet. Okay. But here's the key point is I have to have a MetaMask wallet first, okay? So this is what trips people up. This is just a dummy wallet that's going to sit here. The only way I can connect a hardware wallet to MetaMask is if I first have a MetaMask wallet that is not safe, okay? Like I just showed you, oops, like I just showed you it's not safe. Uh, you go to security and you can look at your seed phrase, but you have to have that. Um, just don't put any crypto in it, okay? So you'll, you'll kind of get a better feeling. So then, you know, I choose my ledger and I've selected Ethereum on the hardware wallet. It says application is ready on the screen. I click ledger because it is a ledger. I click connect. All right. So now it's coming through to my, my ledger. Let's see here. All right, so I have this account that has some a little bit of Ethereum in it, okay. All right, so now, now you can see I've added my hardware wallet to MetaMask and I have account one. And what I could do is I could go here and I could write something like, dummy, don't, Don't use uh, so I know oh this is the one that isn't safe but I have to have to use MetaMask with the hardware wallet and in this you can name it you know 
it automatically gets named ledger one, uh, but you could name it something else as well. And then if you wanted to add a Trezor, you just do the same thing. You'd click connect hardware wallet and add your Trezor. Um, but yeah, so now let's, let's like another thing that trips people up is they, they can't, they don't know how to swap with the ledger. So anytime you do something with a hardware wallet, I'll, I'll show you right now. So we'll, we'll go to the test net for fun. Okay. Oh, look, I have some test PLS here. Dude, you got some pulse chain. Nice. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking I, I would go here, but, uh, all right, let's see. Uh, we'll connect our ledger one. We'll work. Oh, uh, did I already do this? What's going on here? Is that the wrong address? Let's see. No, it should be good. All right. Well, whatever. We'll go to PulseX. I have, I have, uh, I have a tiny bit of, of, uh, test PLS. <laughs> so we're going to make a big money swap here on the test net. For some pulse X, all right, and this is a problem that uh, a lot of people have. So I'm going to try and swap. All right, shows me the info. Uh, if you've swapped without using hardware wallet, this is all very familiar to you. Shows me my gas and whatever. I click confirm. Okay, th that's how it's normally done without a hardware. Hey, what the heck? So what's going on here and this is where a lot of people get tripped up so this is a good little you know telling you exactly what to do so it says please enable blind signing or contract data in the ethereum app settings all right and this can be confusing because it's like what is an ethereum app setting is that in my computer is that in metamask is that you know where is that so that is literally on your device okay um, and it's even says on my, my ledger blind signing must be enabled in settings. Okay. So on the page where it says application is ready on your ledger, you go to the right twice and it says settings. You click on that and right here, you, you guys probably can't see that, but it says blind signing disabled. And all I do is I just double press the buttons and then now it says blind signing enabled uh i go to the right and i click back it says application is ready all right and now i click swap confirm swap and i click confirm and now uh this is you know now i have something on my ledger saying review transaction i go to the right it says the amount uh the address you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, not super important. You, you can just kind of go through to the end. It says accept and send. And well, now the transaction is submitted. So now you kind of get a better understanding of what RH Max was talking about at the beginning of the stream where he said, uh, it's, it's like 2FA. It's like, you can't just click approve in MetaMask. Oh yeah, approve. You have to have your hardware wallet plugged in. You have to enter the pin and sign in. You select the Ethereum app. Uh, you make sure your blind signing is enabled. And uh, yeah, then then you approve it on the ledger itself. But uh, just really quickly, a big a big mistake. So so a big mistake is that people make. I'm gonna remove MetaMask. Um whatever. <laughs> so let's go to so first, let's let's just type in MetaMask on Google and see what happens. Okay, so sometimes there's ads that pop up, obviously, that are uh, scammers will run ads for fake MetaMasks. But uh, this time we didn't get that. But you see MetaMask.io. Uh, click on that. We'll go to, to download. Download for Firefox. That's the browser I'm using. All right. So here's a mistake people make when they get a, a hardware wallet and they are trying to set it up with MetaMask. Oh, what's going on here? Maybe I didn't allow something. Okay, let's see. Okay, all right. 
create a new wallet, they say, oh, I have this ledger that I just set up. That's an existing wallet. Let me import it to MetaMask. That makes sense. And then you go here and you say, yeah, I agree. And you go, oh, okay. Yeah, I, I just made a 24 word phrase with my, my hardware wallet. So this is how I add my hardware wallet. This is <laughs> not what to do. Cause again, you're, you never want to type in your seed phrase anywhere uh, because of key loggers or malware on your computer. So again, you have to, if you don't have a MetaMask yet, you have to create a new wallet. Okay. Uh, you make a password for it, blah, blah, blah. And then you get the 12 word seed phrase for the MetaMask that, uh, kind of like I showed you before. And uh, then it sits, like I showed you earlier, it sits at the front of the MetaMask as the dummy wallet. So uh, <laughs> how was that? Are there any questions? Was that very confusing or is that helpful? No, I, that's a great point. Yeah, it's funny how, I don't know why they do that. It's like, why can't you just have an empty MetaMask with no wallets so you can set up your hardware wallet so people don't get confused on how to do the dummy wallet thing? It's it's. Funny how it's like a workaround to actually make hardware wallets work. It should be a a uh, first class citizen, as they say in the tech world of of MetaMask, but they they quite aren't yet. And I just want to comment too on your two FA. Yeah, like when people think two FA, the only thing they usually know is oh, it's, that's a text message I get to log in, or that's the Authenticator app I use, or whatever. But actually, two FA. I mean, it could be anything. It could be you know the general. Uh, thing is something you know, something you uh, own, something you have, something you are, that sort of thing. So something you have could be your hardware wallet. Something you know could be a password. You know, that's two forms of authentication. MFA is the same thing as 2FA. It just means like could be two, could be three, could be more multi-factor authentication. So there's, I mean, there's different ways to do even three types of, you know, thing. Maybe it's uh, a physical button you press. It's a password, you know. It's a code you get on your authenticator. You can do more than 2FA as well. Uh, so just want to say that 2FA is more than just uh, SMS or, by the way, never use SMS. Not these days. Lots of attacks around that. You can read about it on the internet. Uh, authenticator apps, much more secure. I'll just say that. So no, man, thanks for the demo. That was awesome. Uh, especially using PulseX nice. uh, to go through it too. Like that was yeah, got a, a, ni a nice touch. Yeah, you couldn't have did that. Wallet. You couldn't have did that 24 hours ago. You know, it, it just know, launched right? like not even 24. Yeah. Um, and then let's see what uh, I'll just uh, say a couple things on hardware wallet before we get to the chat. Um, let's see, because I had a couple, couple notes, I believe. Let me see. Yeah, I mentioned earlier. I dropped this in the chat too. If anyone tells you hardware wallets are super secure, unhackable, or whatever, they're not. And there's literally videos on the internet from professional security people who, who have will surprise you on on how uh, easy they are to uh, dump. So, how do you protect yourself? Well, keep it safe. Don't act like oh, I can just I can just leave my my hardware wallet to get stolen. No big deal. Blah blah blah. If your hardware wallet gets stolen, I'm not assuming that anyone out there uh, has expertise to the person who stole it. Probably doesn't have the expertise to do it. It's not a commoditized skill yet, but it may be in the future. It's kind of this you know, race race between uh, how expensive it is to do it, how much mileage you need to do it versus um, the, the benefit and all that stuff. But you should, you, know, you should still move your funds. You should still uh, consider those seed words compromised uh, if you do lose your hardware wallet uh, generally, unless you just it's just impossible to do that for some reason. So yeah, what's that video? It may open your eyes, uh, but that's not a reason not to use hardware wallets. Uh, they solve, clearly solve a problem. We went over the benefits. Uh, but they're not un unhackable or anything like that. And the other part, somebody mentioned too about MetaMask stuff, and I'll go back to the comment in a minute, but I'll just say that there's one attack. You can uh, look it up on Google too, ETH Clipper and Bitcoin Clipper. And these are basically attacks where uh, it's sort of like a form of malware, which replaces the address in your clipboard. So you think you copy and pasted one address, mm -hmm. but it'll monitor your clipboard and it'll switch the address for the, the hacker's address. Um, and then, then you paste it and you're like, oh, I've copy and pasted it fine, but it's not the, it's not the right one. It's the other one. So how does that, how do hardware wallets help with that? They thought about this stuff, right? On the screen, they ask you to verify the numbers, the address, the last four, whatever it is. So may, always make sure when you do a transaction, to, in case you get clippered you know, by some sort of malware, look at your hardware wallet, verify, actually look at it, verify, don't just click through it. 
and just trust your clipboard. You can't trust your clipboard. Uh, that's that's uh, learning from that. So that's a good point. Um, so when mm -hmm. I was just swapping on um, testnet, could that if you could that happen when you click the swap button because you're like sending it to the smart contract? Should you also verify then that you're sending it to the smart contract, or is clicking the swap button typically? you're good to just click through because that's what I that's said a, when I did it. But uh, good, good question. No, that so your clipboard is different than what you're talking to a MetaMask. So you'd be talking to the contract on MetaMask. However, the other part of that is you should verify on Etherscan or otherwise that you're talking to the right contract and you're not on a phishing page. You're not on something like that. So as long right. as the contract address is the one, the official one that you're looking at that you think you're using and you can again compare this I dropped my links to all, or cover all this stuff on my blog as well. There's a bunch of ways to visually see that. As long as you compare the address with the one MetaMask is prompting you, they're the same. You can uh, have confidence that you're interacting with the right smart contract. And then the clipboard part is when you copy and paste an address of the one you want to send it to, but the malware changes uh, in a clipboard to the attacker's address. So when you paste it, it's the attacker's address, not the one you just copied because they, they change it really quickly. And uh, now there's this thing too where MetaMask has a, a section for recent addresses. So you think, so if you want to save time, instead of having to go find your address and copy paste it, you say, oh, well, I sent, here's my address book and it says recent address. Let me just click that. Um, but I'll share my screen real quick. Mm, that's a good part. Uh, point two, using, this, I didn't uh, think, yeah, you can use recent addresses as a way to avoid copy and pasting stuff that's that's good well the, yeah. the thing is uh scammers are finding addresses that look similar to to other addresses that you recently sent yep. and they're sending you a little bit of crypto uh so when you look at a recent address it shows you the the first characters and the last characters um can you see the screen or Oh, sorry. Yeah, I added it now. Oh. Yeah, that's a, that's another. It's a that's a different part. So yes, yeah, so point one is recent addresses you can use to. Uh, well, now you got to be careful. That, now that you throw this into the equation, be careful that the recent address isn't one that an attacker has generated to look like one of your addresses. But then they have to know what your addresses look like. So you kind of have to leak something for them to know that too, or interact mm -hmm. with them before. So there's a little bit more work to that. But yeah, good. You can go ahead. Oh uh, yeah, it's just. Uh, I think this just shows like the scammers are really smart <laughs> and this would probably be something I feel like would happen if you had a very large amount of money. I mean, you could have small amounts, but you know, I feel like the, the more money you have in your wallet, the more of a target there is on your back. Cause again, everything's public on the blockchain. So people are looking around they're so, you know, look at this wallet it has all this money. Let me, let me, uh, you know, see if I can, find out a way to get this guy to send me his money. Uh, so, I mean, this is pretty smart uh, that they would generate these addresses to try and, f and then line them up with the address of a whale perhaps. And uh, just try and scam people in this way. It's pretty creative and it just shows the links that, that uh, these guys will go to. But uh, that's another thing is getting sent like an airdrop to your, so there's ways, even if you have a hardware wallet, besides losing a hardware wallet, like RH Max said, and someone finds it and hacks into it, uh, you could still lose your funds, even though you have a hardware wallet. So the, I feel like the most obvious one is you send it to a, the wrong address, you know, you enter your address wrong, you, you paste it, but then you, your, your pinky hits a letter and you just send it or, uh, you know, you paste a scam address by accident, like we were just talking about, but you could also approve a malicious contract. So you could, you know, you think you're claiming an airdrop, but you're actually approving your wallet to be drained. You know, you have a hardware wallet, but you approved it on your hardware wallet. Um, someone, what scammers will do is they'll just send out, I, I think, I believe this is called a dusting attack. They'll just send out a ton of coins uh, every, to like a bunch of different, addresses and if you interact with those coins uh your wallet gets strained and so yeah check out the links rh max put in the chat for his his blog because he talks about like all this stuff so but what do yeah, you yeah I, I i keep it as a running blog when i find out new attacks and stuff uh that i think we're putting in there i'll update it like today i saw that uh somebody had tweeted about 
contracts, uh, there being like a hedron, a hedrons, a hedron SS and stuff uh, to try to get you to swap for tokens and stuff uh, to try to scam you on that. I'm like, whoa, I didn't even think about the name, the name uh, crunching stuff like that. So uh, I think I will add that to the blog as well. But <laughs> it may say they're it may say they're eight months old or so, but I, I keep them as when I see new stuff, I try to add them to it. But it's it's crazy that the number of I mean, it's just like anything else, the number of creative ways that people can figure out how to bypass protections and stuff. Um, and again, that's I've spent my career studying how, like how to how to do stuff like that uh, and and uh, getting paid to be like, all right, company, this is how you should do it better because, you know, this is the this is the vulnerability is here's how things work and here's how to avoid it. Here's how to protect yourself. So um, no, man, those. Great. I'll, I'll go through uh, go through the chat, see if there's any questions, but I want to move on after we go through a couple of questions on hardware wallets because we got a ton more to unpack here. So let's see. Marco, Marcelo, why do you guys use Ledger so burn with hard to use virtual machine only interact with Meta during your VM? Yeah, so we'll get into virt virtual machines a little bit later. That's They're not a reason to not use a hardware wallet, but uh, virtual machines are definitely something that can help you with security a lot. Uh, I just want to see if there's any hardware wallet questions otherwise let's see scrolling up no, there's a couple uh not particularly hardware wallet question but somewhat relevant metamask great show how do i know if my metamask wallet has been compromised well there's no like alert system so think about so first define your metamask wallet that is one you have access to hopefully if it's not you definitely don't own it in any way but just think about these seed words, just unlocking your ability to access and transfer funds. So there's no way, I mean, I mean, maybe there's some like startup out there doing stuff or some software that claims to do it, but there's no alert system that I know of. They'll be like, your wallet's compromised. Maybe they can use certain heuristics, but you get it like, it's basically virus scanning at that point. Oh, okay. Based on these patterns, this looks like unusual behavior. It gets down to that kind of anomalous behavior stuff that maybe there's software or services that do and probably will be in the future. But there's no like, you know, how would you do that? I, I'm not aware of it. Um, only thing I can think of is, do you see money going back and forth? Uh, do you see money particularly going out of them? Uh, that would be one thing. Is your virus uh, detector detecting malware that says something about crypto? That's one thing you may suspect it. But if you ever suspect it's compromised, get your hardware wallet, create new seed words where they're not on that computer anymore and transfer your stuff over there if you can transfer it, you know, other than native stakes, um, a lot of stuff, you know, tokens and stuff you can transfer. And there's another one on MetaMask, I believe. Let's see. Yeah, casual computing. Do you know if MetaMask is susceptible to man? So it's M-I-T-B, man in the middle, tax. Uh, or session hijack of any kind. Um, they're kind of, that's, I'm trying to frame this question because man in the middle is sort of a thing where you, it typically applies to encryption, uh, those type of things, session hijacking. Again, it's an extension. So there's, it's not, it's not really a session as far as that goes. I mean, there's a session on your browser, but there's not the traditional web session. Um, is it susceptible to man in the middle? I don't, Again, other than uh, the copy and paste thing, I can that kind of comes to mind, but it's uh, yeah, I can't. I don't know, Ben. You got anything on that? <laughs> I do not. Yeah, I, I think it's. I'm trying to. I'm trying to think of what you mean to say because there those those things. MetaMask, a browser extension, isn't natively vulnerable to what I would traditionally think of as man in the middle or session hijacking because those are like web related stuff. Um. But yeah, watch out for the clipper attacks. Um, scrolling through. Answer Paul question in the chat. Appreciate it, Drix. Yeah, man. It's uh, <laughs> value. Trying to bring the value. Yeah, one thing I'll say is if you can move all your crypto to a new seed phrase that's generated from a hardware wallet, do it. But if you're in the situation of having long-term hex stakes, at least add a hardware wallet to like add that 12 word seed phrase to a hardware wallet. That's all you can do. Um, and hopefully it wasn't compromised before and you just don't know it yet. If that makes sense. And I have a video on how to do that here. I'll just put it 
Well, I showed it. I'll put it in the chat. I haven't seen. I know um, Papa Boner, of course. I've learned a lot from him. He has really great content, long, long content, just going over everything. But I made this this uh, tutorial here. Let me do the stream, and I'll, I'll put it in the chat. Uh, yeah, let me know if you're not a mod, and I can mod you to make sure you can put it in the chat. Um, I just, I just pasted it in there. Yeah. Didn't come up. Yeah. Just type, type something in there. So I'll see your name and I can mod you and then you can try it again. Okay. Yeah. Give me that. Give me a wrench, man. I'm going to throw you a wrench, Ben. You got to catch it though. Pick. Don't be All like right. on dodgeball. Don't get it hit in the face. <laughs> dodgeball reference. Movie. That was one of great, my favorite movie. movies growing up. Dude, it's still, it's a great movie. Fantastic. Big Ben Steeler fan. All right, you've been modded, sir. Okay, I just put it in there. That's a very helpful. I've had the comments on that video are pretty much all positive. People have told me it's, it was really helpful. And it just shows how to take an existing MetaMask wallet, adding that seed phrase that you generated in MetaMask to a hardware wallet. But you, the, the only situation you would want to do that is if you have 15 year or, or years long hex stakes that you want to secure. And then I would recommend us if you have a ladder or something else, those stakes end, move it to a new hardware wallet that is secure where the seed phrase was generated by the hardware wallet um, and not MetaMask. So I hope that makes sense. There's a, a one more. We got Corey. What's up, Corey? He had a question. I'm glad you got the extra security chip. I forgot what it's called. Um, yeah. So that's the thing. It's like, the hardware wallets, it's really expensive to have really good security, especially at the chip level where people can't dump the seed word. So casual computing kind of hinted at this too. Uh, TPMs, they're becoming much more popular. Uh, they've been around for a while. Uh, that's that's one part of trusted code stuff. But HSMs are the gold standard, but they cost a lot of money. They're thousands of dollars to get HSMs. So they're not commoditized yet. So when you're looking at a startup who doesn't have a lot of money, they're just trying to like sell your product and they're trying to do the best they can, but they just can't afford a lot of the really costly hardware and then not sell you the device for $500 because you're not going to buy it. You're going to pay 50 bucks, not 500. So a lot of it is that you can, it's not like more money equals more security. There's exceptions. In this case, uh, the, the really good security stuff, either one isn't fast enough. Uh, so it's not practical. You, in different ways or it is just literally too expensive so yeah i don't know the specifics between ledger and trezor what security chips they have and which one is supposedly more secure uh but i would be skeptical of that as you could hint in my voice of if the if they're claiming to have something that's really good versus the other one they are competitors uh i would have to watch a deep dive in order to evaluate it more myself as far as that goes okay we do have one from official rent all right one more on hardware wallets we're going to move on everyone so what if we got a hardware wallet? We already have MetaMask of stakes. Do you still remember making dummy count of a ledger? Do you just answer that, Ben? I think I think I did. Okay. Uh, connect that, yeah. Add that seed phrase to the ledger. That video that I linked in the chat will tell you exactly what to do, show you what to do, because um, I could sit here and explain it, but if you just go watch that video, it's going to be a lot easier for you to follow. Gotcha. Um. All right, everyone, I want to move on to because somebody mentioned. Let's talk about, let's talk about, well, first, insecurity, by the way, basic, basic fundamentals. Locks on doors, safes, they're all jokes. They're all just jokes. They only keep honest or undetermined people out. Security is all about either making it expensive for something to happen, for, for you to get robbed or whatever, or making it uh, time intensive where it's just not worth it. So that's why you have like two hour fire safes and stuff and, and, and two hour, uh, whatever they put limits on how long they think it would take for something to penetrate that safe. Uh, as far as doors and stuff, anyone can go to your house, you know, take, take your door off the hinges, uh, kick it down, credit card, well, all that stuff. You can get more secure locks, but it only keeps less sophisticated thieves out. So, uh, hope that makes you feel real safe and cuddly, but thankfully, <laughs> thankfully we're, uh, you know, it, it's, we live in a world where, it's most people won't try hard to break into your stuff if you have anything more than the basics. So uh, hardware wallets, everyone, hardware wallets. So 
Virtual machines. I want to put this in here too. Uh, I think Marco mentioned it as well. I, I can I can hear everyone's eyes glazing over over the the, the annals of the internet, but it's really not that hard. I'm going to bring it up on the screen as well because it's really not that complicated to do this stuff. Just nobody seems to like understand how to really do it. So this is a crypto flavored one. Now, a lot of times, I mean, this has nothing to specifically do about crypto as far as virtual machines, but uh, this one in particular, I thought was good because a lot of people feel familiar with crypto and Ethereum and stuff. They may, uh, you know, understand this a little bit better. So they actually go through, they talk about virtual machines. It is a, at a basic level, it is a computer within your computer. It is a uh, isolation layer. So pretend you have a computer and then you can download a program and install windows inside your windows, for example. And you just have another browser window. It's not really a browser. It's just another window, not a browser window. So you have another window and it has another computer in it. And there's just, Hey, there's another windows right beside the windows right there. So, and then in that Windows, you can have a browser. And in that browser, you can browse the internet and you can do MetaMask, you do all the stuff. So you can do that. And yeah, you can do it for MetaMask in it. You can do whatever you want. But the reason I like virtual machines, or I think a lot of people should use them, is if you download something, you can run it. If you download some EXE, which you shouldn't, that you don't know it's not trusted or all this stuff, you can run it in the virtual machine. You can start a virtual machine. You can do a snapshot of a fresh installation of Windows, for example. You can, uh, so you take a snapshot, which just takes, you can roll it back. You can just go back to that same point in time. And then uh, you start it at the snapshot. You run the program, you do whatever you want to do. And then when you're finished, uh, you can roll it back and everything goes away. It was like it was before. So that way you can run stuff. You can do all the, all the sketchy stuff on the virtual machine. And the virtual machine can never talk, not, I mean, basically can never talk to your real computer. So if it is malware that you run the virtual machine, your real computer isn't affected at all. And if you find out it's malicious or whatever, then you can just roll back to the snapshot and it's not there anymore. So how do you do a virtual machine? I'm not going to go through everything. I'll just show you like VirtualBox is the one that's free, open source. A lot of people use it. Again, it's super simple to do this stuff. It's all VirtualBox. Uh, you can put Linux, you put Windows, you put whatever you want on it. And then just follow these instructions. Uh, this guy's got a lot of stuff. You don't have to install, uh, you don't have to install a VPN, but you can do other stuff. Uh, I like Brave Browser. Uh, it just blocks a lot of ads on mobile. So I love stuff like that. Uh, there's Tails. There's other privacy OS OSs he goes through too. But again, it's super simple. There's got to be a screenshot of actually running here. Sort of that. Let's see. Scroll down. Come on, show me it actually running. Yeah, so you see the window here. It is a window of Linux, and that could be Windows just as well. It's just this a Linux example running on your computer. This is your computer. This is a window with another computer running. And uh, he goes through everything. So that's a great resource for that. You can use VirtualBox, there's VMware, there's a bunch of different ones, there's paid and free options. But that's, how, that's the basics of virtual machine. And uh, yeah. Marco's happy I'm talking about virtual machine. I only use VM for meta, nothing else, cell based drivers. Yeah, like I said, you can you can use it for uh, MetaMask, you can use it for um, installing whatever EXE, just do a snapshot. Make sure you do a snapshot because snapshot means you can roll it back and everything else that you did at that moment until you roll it back, it's gone. And you can just keep doing it over and over and over. So you can use that as an isolation layer to prevent malicious programs from running on your own computer while you still get to use those programs and try them out. Aaron says, I use the VM with Linux installed. Yeah, you use Linux, Windows. I'm sure some of them even support Mac these days. If you if you run M1 processor, um, or I mean, there's virtual machines on Mac that you can run Windows and other stuff with too, I believe. Um, so that goes to my next point. So we talked about 2FA. Uh, yes, I made a question about browsers. I want to get to that too, because that's one of the things I want to go over. Just scrolling up. Yeah, and jump in here anytime, Ben, if you have any uh, any points or anything. Okay. Let's see. Where is the the guy asked about Firefox? Here we go. 
Jack, Jack ZZ, you, you explained that to me the other day. I forgot what your name means. It's like Jake or something. But anyways, good question. Is Firefox browser more secure? So they're all secure pretty much. Um, Firefox, Chrome, Safari, Edge, they all have vulnerabilities. So they all are on a spectrum of being secure or not. The best thing you can possibly do to keep yourself from getting hacked, more than hardware wallets, I, I, I dare say that, I dare say that, is keep your browser up to date and don't click on crazy links. You keep your browser up to date, that means the vulnerabilities that they patch, you, you aren't affected by. So the, if you want to go next level, let's go next level. Use a Mac. Use your Mac and keep your browser up to date because Windows, I give this analogy, it's like driving down the bad neighborhood. Right? The bad neighborhood, <laughs> sketchy houses, it's people outside, look like they, don't, they want to do you harm, perhaps. You don't want to walk around, right? That's you using Windows, okay? Because everyone on the internet says, oh my gosh, there's 99% market share of Windows. That's who we're going to target. The, these, the people who want to hack a lot of people target the people that run Windows because that's the most people are running it. So if you use a Mac, it's like going down, oh, it's a nice neighborhood. Hey, oh, every once in a while you see somebody sketchy. But overall, <laughs> nobody's out there trying to rob you. Nobody's out there like trying to, trying to you know, steal your stuff. Uh, there's only a few people, but not very many. So if you want to be in the 99% of people who are targeted by attacks, maybe you don't get hacked all the time, but you're risking doing it if you're running Windows at all, because that's what all the malware is written for. If you're running Mac, there's still malware for it, but nobody, again, if, why would you target, if you want to make the most amount of money, as Ben mentioned earlier, people want to make money, they want to steal it sometimes, they want to do it honestly, whatever. If they're writing malware to steal your money, they're going to target the 99% of market share to get the most amount of money. They're not going to target the 1%. So somebody point me to some crypto malware for Mac. I haven't seen it. It may exist, but I haven't seen it because it doesn't make sense to. They want to make the most money. They're going to target Windows. You want to go even further? Use Linux. <laughs> There's a fraction of a 1% of market share for Linux. So nobody's writing malware, you know, unless you're super, super targeted by a nation state or something for Linux. So don't use Windows uh, if you want to be like, if you want to avoid the bad neighborhood type of thing. I know everyone's out there, but Mac, they're expensive and they're hard and I got to learn, learn and they're beautiful. Okay. <laughs> they're beautiful. And I'm a little biased, but they're beautiful. I actually use yeah, Windows I forever. I use Windows forever and I converted to Mac for a lot of my machines uh, not too long ago. And I'm like, never could be happier. Hmm. Yeah. I just used uh, Firefox for the tutorial. I use Firefox. Uh, I can't remember why. I think, I think someone in hex security recommended it, which I'm about to drop some major sauce. The hex security telegram chat is a really good place to ask questions. Uh, I've got a lot of great answers from that chat. Uh, there's some really smart guys in there. The flip side is that scammers also lurk in that chat. So if anyone DMs you from the chat, uh, I'm going to put it in here right here. No one's going to DM you from the chat. They're going to copy the, the admin's name from the chat and try to DM you and say, hey, I saw you had a security question. Well, now I'm going to give you the one-on-one -on -one help. No, they're, they're going to answer your questions in the Hex Security Telegram publicly in front of everyone. So, uh, but that's a really good place to go. If you just have general questions, there's guys who literally give their time for free in that chat. And it also goes to show how awesome the, uh, the hex community is because literally guys are in there for free, giving, giving out free knowledge to people who, who need help. So if you're a new person, that's a great place to go. Um, but just again, be careful of the scammers messaging you yeah. pretending to be the admins, pretending to help you. No one's going to DM you. Don't just don't answer DMs. I don't know how many hot women per day DM me on Telegram. <laughs> and it's just I, I get to I'm kind of like, can you just be a normal pro profile avatar? Or like, can you just pretend to be a guy? I would probably answer it because I know nobody's going to be contacting me with that per, 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 uh, persona. I don't know what how they get people. I guess I don't know. Maybe I'm just not the right guy. Or maybe guys are just they're waiting on Telegram for the hot women to message them. I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> Yeah, okay. I, you know, I've had I've had people come to me, women and men, who got scammed by scammers pretending to be the opposite sex. So, it's crazy. yeah. <laughs> uh, here's a great question from HH. What about iPhones malware? So, let's talk about Android versus iPhone. Uh, ben brought this up before. Very interesting topic. It doesn't really matter. And again, this is my 
I'm, don't give it. I always say I don't give professional advice of any kind, but if I ever would give professional advice, it would be, you know, in, in this domain because you know, this, is, this is my deal. So iPhone has security bugs. Android has a major security bug going on right now. So unless you update your phone, please turn off Wi-Fi calling uh, because anyone with your phone number can send you uh, malware. Basically, they can they can hack your phone remotely. Uh, if you have an Android phone that's affected by this crazy, the worst type of vulnerability possible, it's like no interaction, don't have to open a text. It's just like, we know your phone number so they can exploit the, the Wi-Fi daemon uh, that's using Wi-Fi calling stuff, I guess. Uh, the te- they've so they've withheld the technical details right now. Otherwise, I would go into it and like tell you more about it. But that's how bad it is. It's like they got they delayed disclosure of the vulnerability because they. And I'm like a lot of cases. I'm like, yeah, you know, you know, security professionals and stuff. We need to know. We need to understand this stuff too to know how to how serious it is and how to tell people about it, how to protect yourselves. But if it's a bug like this, you know, I, I get it. They uh, they withheld it a little bit longer. But anyways, what matters is your updates. Get on the latest version of this stuff if you want to have all the security patches. That's plain and simple, most basic thing. Update your browser, update your phone, because those not only have uh, functionality updates and new features and all that stuff, maybe some of them you don't want, I get it, but they have security updates. Some devices are end of life and they never have any more security updates. And people are still using them for years and years and years. I'm sure iPhone 5 works fine because Apple makes products that last forever. Shout out to Max. But they don't get updates uh, more than likely of a lot of the security vulnerabilities. So it doesn't matter iPhone versus Android at a technical level. If you put a water pistol to my head, as her friend Tommy says, um, I, I maybe iPhone, but it's like, that's not the, the vulnerability is not the phone. The vulnerability is the user. Anyone can send you a link and, and take your money or take your time or, or hack your phone in certain ways if you're not patched. So, I never think about it as Android versus iPhone, whichever one's more secure. I think of it as, am I a person capable of not clicking on links, uh, installing weird stuff on my phone, disabling all the security stuff on my phone so I can install some random app that gives me coupons or whatever. Uh, yeah, if you don't do all that stuff, it doesn't matter what what platform you use as far as that goes. It's the user that's going to get exploited, not the phone at that level. That's what you should be worried about. Yeah, and I, I don't think it's wise to like use MetaMask on the phone uh, or anything like Another that. Another thing too, I, d- I don't use crypto on my phone. I don't use, I, tr- I try not to use any crypto app on my phone. I just, I don't, I, I don't like portable. I don't, I just, it's, I just feel like you're risking stuff when you take, especially your money, maybe other things. They're portable. It can be stolen. You take it everywhere with you. It's, you're always at risk of losing it. So, it just never felt like a good idea to put crypto on my phone. So that's, that's why I don't do it. Um, nothing against stake or app or anything else. They, they write amazing stuff, you know, love, love everything they do for the community. Uh, just personally, I, I just, unless it's like a test wallet or something, I mean, I had a Bitcoin wallet on my phone maybe for a while too, just to be like, Oh, what if I'm, what if I'm in South America and I want to pay in Bitcoin somewhere, <laughs> that kind of thing. But I would never, I, I, I don't put serious crypto on my phone. I'll say that. Would you ever um, put your, addresses into staker app so you're not actually connected you're just seeing your balances or you don't even do that you you definitely take so that comes down to it's not even about trusting them it's about trusting like what if they have a compromise one day everybody has compromises Mm, i mean all companies do i don't i don't know how they they store their logs i don't know how they still or if they Mm -hmm. maybe they don't store logs at all i hope they don't so I don't know their security infrastructure, nor do I do any other companies. So that's why I, I would, I know it's a, it's a, it's kind of a shame too because they have so many cool features. But I, I um, prefer, I try not to do stuff like that just in case, so I don't dox myself and stuff like that. But again, this is not me talking about Staker app in particular. I'm just talking about any company that right. uh, would offer those features. I would be a little hesitant just because I don't know their security posture or if they're not keeping logs or what they have to do because of regulations, there's a lot of complexities into it. So. Good to see you for finance. Yeah. What's up, Furu? Good to see you, me. Why not MetaMask on a phone? What if you lose your phone and your money's on your phone? Yeah. If you have a password, all that stuff. I don't know. I don't like, I don't want to go through the panic of, Hey, my wallet's on my phone and I lost it. 
and hope they don't get into it. You know, that sort of thing. I just, I just don't like the feeling. It just doesn't make me feel like my stuff's secure. It's so. also like uh, almost impossible to use it with Uniswap. Uh, like it just doesn't work with dApps. So like why, like I think maybe sometimes people want it there to like check their balance or something, but. Well, just, just use a link how, to Ether, Etherscan yeah. for that. But yeah, add a, yeah. add a link to Etherscan with your address and put it on your, on your home screen and you can check your balance. Yeah. yeah. So it's just not worth it. Um, but if that's yeah, all you it, got, then, you know, you, you got to do what you can do and just be careful not to download stuff on your phone that's weird or do weird stuff, I guess, is all you can do at that point. Yeah. And that's, that's again, it's like if, if I ever get compromised, I don't want it to be because of my phone. I put something on my phone because the phone has a lot of personal information for everyone, right? Like you, it's, uh, I just don't want to take those, those type of risks. What's up, Stefan? Well, I can it's share right now, stuff. Mofos. Yeah. If you, if you like, I mean, if you like, you can do, do that type of stuff. Graphene, graphene OS. Yeah. So, oh, for pixels, dudes, then pushing on security tips to fight your face on the hardware. Is for for pixel only phones. Do them pushing out security updates based on years. I'm not sure I understand that, Paul. But Graphene OS is a uh, security centric oh, mobile OS, I, I do believe. But I'm not sure on the updates. I'm not sure I understand the updates still. But uh, feel free to clarify. Use Fatty. Yeah, there you go. Fatty. Fatty.io is fantastic for uh, checking on on Godwell. That's what I used to do. I check on <laughs> on Godwell and see that trillionaire. See what he's up to. Yep. They build a lot of cool stuff. Just got off for browsing day. Pixel 7 at 5 bucks a month. Unlimited research crafting. Okay. Interesting. I don't know. I like unlocked phones, though. I'll just say. I mean, it has nothing to do with this. I just like, I don't like, be, I don't like being locked. I like to be able to switch carriers if I need to. Um, and I hate using Windows. Okay. I'm telling you, man. Let's go Mac. We're going to start a revolution. We're going to get all the crypto people on Mac so they stop getting hacked. Get on Mac. Stop getting hacked. There you go. It just, it just <laughs> makes sense. It just makes sense. Android has a crazy amount of apps. Yeah, that's it's kind of what I was talking about with Android. You can on on iPhone. It's harder to turn the security stuff off because every time somebody wants to download some app, it's not on the store. Android will let you do it. You can turn all this stuff off. But when you do that, yeah, you get all the flexibility of, of using custom apps and all that stuff. But now you're opening yourself up to, you're removing yourself from all the security protections against uh, the malware that, maybe in those apps you're trying to use. So that's, I guess they get a leg up there. There's some architecture things that are better and worse, but yeah, it's at the end of the day, it's, it's you like you, you can get hacked or not get hacked that most of the time, unless it's Wi-Fi vulnerability with Android, I'll say that one. I mean, that's, that's not a user problem. That's like, that's just a critical bug in the phone, but most of the time it's a, it's a user. It's you clicking on something, you installing something, you just trying to get fast, clicky, clicky, red, warning, do not do this, click, fuck you, warning, do not do this, no, let me do it, you're not a boss, it's that kind of thing that gets you, uh, gets into trouble. Phones are just one of the computers, iPhones are probably more on the back, do it just, I, well, I would say that the mobile platforms are, because they're only meant to run apps, and they're pretty locked down, so tablets and phones, architecture-wise, are more secure, if you could call it that, I I hate generalizing it like that, but they, on a Mac and Windows, you can run any software you want. And on a platform like a tablet, you can only run apps that are from the app store, for example. Which one's more secure? Which one's going to have, you know, the one that lets you run everything and the one that only lets you run their stuff. Just process elimination uh, on that one. All right, I'm going to move on to the next one. Get on Max. Stop getting hacked. Mac, Mac. Oh, okay. I see what you did there. There you go. Get on Mac. Stop getting hacked. That's that's another way to do it. That's true. It's true. I like Linux. But yeah. I mean, I don't talk about Linux a lot because I know nobody cares or wants to do it. But Ubuntu, Fedora, there's a lot of distribution to Linux that work fine. If you're just using a web browser and you're not a gamer, you can totally use Linux. Like you don't you don't need to you don't need Windows or Mac. You can use Linux. But I mean, Mac's Mac's pretty good. I like it. It's for the it's for the for the general public. It's pretty good. Samsung pushes out updates based on the version of Android you have. Yeah, there's a bunch of like, I don't. Yeah, both of them, Apple and Google, do a lot of weird stuff around 
you know, that, that when there's some lawsuit about them slowing down your phone to get you to upgrade a while back, like there's some shady stuff that they do that to make more money and all that stuff. But, and maybe they, you know, Oh, sure. It, it would be a, it'd be a shame if your phone got hacked, you better upgrade to the next version because we're not doing security updates for that one anymore. Ha huh? Like, yeah, there's some, there's some ass, ass hatting going on there too. Don't have your wallet on the phone. Maybe a small trader wallet. Max. Oh, Max, not my name, but like at, at the Max. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I mean, that's basically my thing. I think, yeah. Shout out to Papa B. Pretty good. Malware will move to where the most user base is. Yes, and that is Windows. Unless you root it, and that's Android maybe, I can reference. Okay, so the next one. Guys, get your questions in. We're up on an hour and we'll probably get for another 15 minutes or so. Just had a couple other things. Or did I? I'm scrolling. Oh, VPNs. We need to talk about those. So VPNs. They are for privacy, not security. No, privacy is not security. They are tangentially related in some areas, but privacy is not security. I've heard all the arguments against this. I know, I know. Don't say like, oh, but you can't have privacy without security. I know, I know. VPNs are meant to, to give you a secure tunnel from one network to another. The industry has bastardized the term VPN in the last few years because retail, all these companies, Found a way, oh my gosh, we can, VPNs kind of do some security stuff so we can sell it to people based on a monthly subscription and run a bunch of our own servers. Yeah, I get it. VPNs are great for if you're being censored somewhere, you're in a country or whatever and you need to get around some kind of censorship. Uh, if you need to connect to your corporate network, maybe you work from home and you want to dial into the office or you have a work from remote job, all that stuff, they do that. Or if you're using public Wi-Fi and it's super sketchy and you're like, ah, maybe just in case I'll do a VPN. Those three scenarios, perfectly fine. Amazing. Good job. Go for it. If you're using one at home in hopes that it will help you not get hacked, I don't see any point in that. And I, I want someone to tell me because I've talked to other security professional friends and they've also, I'm like, am I missing something here? Like, what does it do? Why would you ever run a VPN at home? Unless you want to look like you're coming from somewhere else. You don't want to, you want to hide your IP for whatever reason. And by the way, I can break that down too. You don't get hacked by people knowing your IP address these days. Maybe 20 years ago, that was a thing. Not these days. There's too many firewalls. They're blocking ports, all that stuff. VPNs, um, IP addresses, they change a lot. They're they're dynamic and a lot of, a lot of times too. Not that valuable to have for an attacker, unless you know, unless they're part of some other sophisticated attack. They hack you through your browser being out of date, as we covered, or they hack you by clicking on some link or installing some exe or running some file. All that stuff. It's not your IP address. So that was 20 years ago. Not anymore. Uh, everything's browser based pretty much these days. Majority of this stuff. So if you're running a VPN at home. Who's who's hacking your Wi-Fi? If you're on that bad of Wi-Fi, I maybe if you're on if you can't trust your own network, that's like a separate problem. You should probably deal with that. But if you're using a VPN for privacy, just use Tor. Download Tor. Use the Onion network. It's free. It works. It's a little bit slower, sure. Maybe you want do you want high speed privacy hiding IP address stuff? I guess if you want that, but I don't see any point in it. I really don't. Maybe you have some specific use case. I've never used a VPN home at home in my life. Not a, not a retail VPN. I've only used it for like work remotely and stuff like that, which is perfectly fine for. So if you're using one at home, I don't know why. Uh, if you want privacy, you can use Tor. You can use a regular proxy, which is fine. And double whammy here, the VPN software you install could have vulnerabilities in it itself. So you're putting more software on your computer that has access to a lot of key stuff because VPN, they have access to like your network stack and it probably runs as a privileged user and all these other security concepts. And there have vulnerabilities that I, I don't, I forgot to bring some links with me, but there, there have been vulnerabilities in VPN software. So ironically, people who have installed VPN software before have, you know, had vulnerabilities and they might they have gotten hacked, all this stuff. Second point, if you're connecting to them and then they're connecting to whatever you're doing, 
they're probably logs and they probably have to keep logs of your stuff. And how do you know that they're not? Or how do you know what they're doing with them? How do you know if there's a deletion policy? You don't have any insight at what the company's doing with your stuff, most likely, or at least you don't have a, a super transparent view. So again, VPNs, use them for the right purpose. That's what I recommend. Use them if you're if you're traveling or whatever, you need censorship, uh, censorship resistance. If I can tell you my blockchains now. Uh, use them if you're at some crazy Wi-Fi spot that you're just like, ah, I don't know what's going on. Even though modern browser protections have kind of eliminated a lot of those threats anyways, they're not really that important. Everything's on HTTPS these days. Everything's encrypted. So a lot of attacks go away. Modern browsers predict against a lot more stuff than they used to five years ago even. So even that's kind of a fishy use case. Um, or use them if you need to work remotely, you need to connect to corporate office just as if you were there, all fine. But if you're paying a, a monthly subscription for a VPN and you're only using it at home and you're using it because it makes you feel safe and you're not going to get hacked on this stuff, it is not work for security. It's just hiding your IP address. Just think about it that way. And you can use Tor or Proxy if you want to do that. If you want security, so segue into the malware uh, conversation or the uh, antivirus conversation that me and Ben were talking about offline earlier. So I, I, if you're using Windows, I only use on my Windows uh, machines and stuff. Hey, talking about what I do because it's like an OPSEC thing too. But I, let's see, how can I phrase this? I don't, I don't remember the last time I installed a antivirus on a Windows computer. I've never had a reason to. Uh, for the last 10 years or so, Windows Defender has been built into uh, a lot of versions of Windows. I think starting eight version uh, in Windows 8, Windows Defender has been built into Windows. They have an amazing elite security team doing all kinds of stuff there. And they're basically like a little antivirus company within Microsoft. So, and it does a great job as long as you keep it up to date, like all the other ones. You don't need all the fancy be bells and whistles. You just need to stop clicking on links pretty much. So I would not buy antivirus. I don't remember the last time I ever bought one for friends and family, even though they give you all the deals at Christmas time and they try to include it in every bundle. It's just a company that making the money machine go burr. Got to keep selling stuff. Um, however, I know some people like malware bots. They like all this stuff. It's almost like a religion at this point. Like I, every time I hear somebody antivirus, like, they have their favorite one they use for you know 10 or 15 years. They're loyal to it. I get it. But again, my, my opinion is use what's built into Windows on Mac. I wouldn't see any reason to install one on Mac because they have a bunch of other security features combined with the fact that almost no one writes malware for Mac. So again, don't run crazy stuff. Probably won't have any problems. And then Linux, you know, same deal. Just even, even uh, less malware and stuff on Linux. So that's my VPN and um, antivirus opinion. What about you, Ben? What's up? Uh, what do you think about like uh, password managers? Yeah, that's a, that's a good one too. So password managers. I don't like the online ones because and there's examples. You can go Google for, uh, what was it? KeyPass or somebody. It's, every uh, once in a while, they get pass. compromised. LastPass. They yeah. get compromised every once in a while. It can happen. So if you give your data to someone else, no matter how much secure they say they have, no matter how many passwords or military grade and all that stuff. At the end of the day, if they have access to the data and they're not using some um, form of encryption, there are forms of encryption where they, like, they can verify data, but they don't know what it is exactly, but they can tell that it's correct. Unless they're using some crazy form of that magic, which most likely they aren't, don't even, that's an exception, not the rule. If they can get access to it, then anyone, like a, an attacker can, like anyone who compromises them can get access to it. And this stuff happens all the time. So I do not use online password managers where that syncs across your devices, all this stuff. Yeah, super convenient. I don't use them. But the uh, the the local ones, the you know, the offline password managers, the programs you can run, you can Google for all the different ones. The ones that stay on your computer and they have a database of the passwords you can uh, encrypt with a master password. I think that's how I, I think that's how key passes and it's free. Yeah, so there's key pass, there's a few. I mean, different platforms have different versions, but anything that's local and does not store it in the cloud, on the internet, at the company, does it sync across your devices? Mm -hmm. It's probably, and it just has a local password database that you protect with a master password. That's kind of the standard because uh, it's in your control. You just got to make sure you back up the master database. Like make sure you back that up every once in a while um, mm -hmm. and you don't forget that password because it's going to have a lift. It's going to have all your passwords in it and you're going to be really screwed. Um, 
but yeah, the online stuff, I, I don't want anything to do with it. Right. That makes sense. Well, cool. Uh, so HH has asked this question about using the Ledger app on his phone, you but using the hardware wallet to approve the transactions. I would still say just don't do any crypto on your phone, like at all, even with that, because are because then aren't you using the Bluetooth on the hardware wallet? Um, that just makes me feel uncomfortable using Bluetooth with with the ledger <laughs> i've never used i've never used a, a wallet with a hardware i would Perfect. say they use bluetooth yeah. though so i mean everything uses bluetooth you know i'm not gonna you know your tesla key is bluetooth so that makes sense they would use bluetooth for that which yeah yeah it's yeah it doesn't make me feel warm or fuzzy doing that either yeah i think you can turn off the bluetooth for your ledger uh i think they they give you that option when you're first setting it up so if you're someone who gets a new new ledger and they're like, want to enable Bluetooth? I would recommend just not even enabling it in the first place and then not using your phone. Like I get people like using their phone. It's easy and simple, but... <laughs> not with my sack wanna, money. Yeah, you don't want to <laughs> lose your crypto. Yeah. Wife well, uses VPN for Netflix. Perfectly fine scenario. Love it. Censorship resistance. There you go. Love it. Uh, good morning. Hex going to lost in Asia. I hope, uh, hope you're not too lost, man. <laughs> or if you're lost, I hope you're having fun. Paul Sachs, after my NordVPN in the, the year, I'm going to go with Proton VPN traveling. Uh, works on user friendly, works on and actually integrate with Tor. It's so funny. Yeah. Uh, I get, yeah, if you travel, if you travel, just if as long as you're not using a home, I, again, I don't, I'm not hating on VPNs. I'm just saying people. They, they go for the uh, magic pill, magic pill syndrome. That's what I'm going to call it. Instead of shiny object syndrome, magic pill, please just fix it. If I could just pay money for something monthly, I'll be more secure. And hmm. it's understandable. Like I, I get it. And if I wasn't an expert in this stuff, I would probably do it too. But I'm just you know, trying to tell you the you know, what I believe to be the truth on the matter. Uh, let's see. They use mainstream VPN services. And I'm telling you, I, I wouldn't be surprised if all of them collect, have data collection stuff and just, how many, it, it literally takes all these news articles to come out to be like, oh, they get hacked and all these people got compromised before people um, need, you know, start start uh, wanting to take action and, and figure this stuff out, which again, it's just human nature, right? You want you want magic pill. You want easy. I get it. I get it. Just uh, again, traveling, whatever, just not at home. I, I don't see any point in using it at home. Changing your DNS. What I, is that in reference to something, Rico? That is possible to do in a lot of different contexts. I'm not sure what context you were talking about, though. How can you tell the ledger potentially been compromised with buying it? So there is, I'm sure there's videos that can explain this too, but a lot of them come with seals and they're tamper resistant seals. And definitely if you see something that's not sealed, yeah, don't have anything to do with it. Do not use it, return it. But however, again, there's ways to uh, modify the seals, but even then, okay, now they got to, now they got to have a way to actually back to the device, which is a huge barrier to entry. I wouldn't worry about it that as much. Uh, so I wouldn't worry about them bypassing tamper resistant seals and backdooring the device because if they did that, then like you're getting targeted by like a nation state or something. There's a certain line of like, they're going to get you. They're going to baseball bat attack you or something if, if that's happening. Um, so don't get targeted. Be nice to people, I guess. Don't be don't be a target. Much love, Hex. Yeah, yeah. Hex. We didn't even talk about uh, Hex Pulse Chain most most any of this, which is uh, I'm surprised that <laughs> we had a bunch of questions around it. So you guys kept it security AMA. Nice. nice. However, Hex and Pulse Chain, good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, I think we'll yeah, man. Any anything else? I'm, I'm looking at my stuff. I don't think I see any other. I think we hit pretty much everything. Yeah, just uh, tell people it's really awesome they're here watching the stream, whether live or replay, uh, because this is really important. And one thing I know a lot of people, they think they don't have to take security as seriously because they don't have a lot of crypto or whatever. But uh, in this crypto game, things can go up pretty fast, pretty far, and you don't want to get caught with uh, your pants down, I guess you could say. So, I mean, a, a hardware wallet is literally like $69, like the cheapest Trezor. 
Um, so there's so many resources on YouTube. Like I have some on my channel tutorials, but there's so many on, on YouTube. There's really no excuse. Uh, you know, <laughs> just put a little effort in. Um, so yeah, but awesome that people tuned in and, uh, you know, I try to answer people's questions that I get on Twitter or whatever. So try reach out or on YouTube comments. If you comment on my YouTube channel, I, I really do make an effort to like answer people and I live stream like once a week and I really interact with the chat. And of course, RH max is like always streaming. And, uh, this is a really informative stream even for me. So like in terms of computer security background, I really don't have much. I've just, for me, my brain, when I first got into crypto, is was like, okay, if I'm going to seriously invest in crypto, I need to know security the best I can. So watching people like Papa Boner, really people in the Hex community are so smart with this stuff. I think uh, RH Max, of course, uh, Papa Boner, like I said, and the Hex Security Telegram uh, that we linked earlier is there's so many good resources. There's a lot of smart people in the community. Just be careful of people DMing you directly saying, hey, I heard you were interested in security. Let me help you out. And uh, just, it seems like how, common sense. How's your hardware but, uh, wallet going? How's your hardware wallet yeah. going? Can yeah. I help you? Go to this link. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. but yeah, that's kind of my, my closing thoughts. Um, you know, what yeah, are you I even mean, in this game for if you're not taking the security seriously? Like, what are you even doing here? So. I think, yeah, Ben's got some security resources, uh, as he mentioned, to pop a boner. Uh, uh, did you say Jacob? God, I keep, sorry, I keep forgetting your name. Jack CG. Uh, I think it's Jacob. Uh, Jacob, uh, on security courses, I mean, I don't have any top of my head I would recommend as far as formal courses go. But if you want to binge something, you feel free to go binge my last five security AMAs where I'll talk about a lot of different stuff. Uh, even more than we talked about today and go into detail a lot of things. And of course, uh, yeah, search for just, uh, I don't know if you type hex and security, maybe you'll find stuff. I'm not sure, but uh, that, I think, and my blog, of course, yes, please. I literally put all, I put a lot of time and research into how to protect yourself against a lot of different attacks on the blog, cover everything in a lot of detail there. Uh, so appreciate it. And what else? I think that my closing thoughts would be, Focus on even more than hardware wallets, focus on the user. I think that's the biggest thing that can help you avoid getting hacked, losing your pulse chain bag, losing your pulse X hack, losing your hex, losing, you know, pain, suffering, all the stuff that goes along with getting hacked. It, it, it sucks. I don't wish it on anyone. And a lot of times it, it, it can maybe it can be a wake up call in certain ways. And hopefully it doesn't hurt that much. To get, to get you into getting a hardware wallet to motivate you. Hopefully it doesn't happen, happen, have to happen the hard way, right? Uh, at the same time, it's all about the user. Don't click on links. Don't talk to DMs. Don't, you know, be vigilant on phishing uh, type of text. MetaMask is never going to ask for your password. Don't answer any of those emails. If you ever get an email, crypto, e crypto email from anyone, you should probably ignore it unless you know them before. And, and even then they could be, pretend to be someone else or someone you know too. So just, I think, uh, oh, I'll throw a virus total out there. That's a great one. Uh, let me put it in the chat. Forgot yeah, so Pop, virus total. Mm -hmm. Papa Boner's been having these like weekly um, Hex Pulse security roundtables on Twitter spaces. Now I haven't uh, tuned in any, just I haven't caught one, but uh, that's a good, that'd be a good place to go. Um to go follow yeah. his Twitter and try to tune into one of those and become a speaker and just ask your questions. Like be stupid, ask, ask stupid questions and be stupid. And so you're not stupid anymore. Like take the security seriously. Um, you know, and I had another thought, but I, it escaped me. So. Oh, sorry. I'll, I'll finish on my, on my user, yeah, yeah, user thing too. Virustotal.com. You can go there. You don't need to download the EXEs. You can send them the link. Or if you do download them, you don't have to run them. You can upload it to Virus Total. It's like a crowdsourced 100 different antivirus software. It'll upload it, tell you if any of those flagged it for malware. Great, great website. Highly recommend people use that. But it, it's really up to you. You can you cannot use a hardware wallet. You can run Windows. You can do a lot of things that putting yourself at some sort of risk. 
And if you just don't click on the wrong stuff, I mean, just being honest here, like you, if, if, I don't know, you almost, you almost gotta be a security expert at that point. Um, you know, I'm kind of in that position. So I'm just trying to, my, I'm trying to describe, you shouldn't, that's not the ideal situation, but my point is you can elevate yourself. You can make yourself more secure by not clicking through all the, all the warnings when the websites are warning you not to do this or that uh, by checking uh, the the addresses before you talk to contracts, the addresses before you approve transactions on hardware wallet, you are the most critical point in the security link. So if you do nothing else, uh, vigilance, vigilance is key. And uh, I think underrated, the user, user performance of uh, not clicking on everything is super underrated security aspect. Yeah, I think um, maybe having like a separate I guess it's not totally necessary, but having a separate laptop for only crypto stuff. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I think so. Even browsers, I would say have a use another use a different browser. You can use, you know, if you use Chrome and Firefox, uh, use one for crypto, one for everything else. Um, use another computer for crypto only. It depends because, you know, tell a lot of people that and they're like, oh, I'm a trader, so I'm never going to do that. I need to, I need to get access to my coins and you're like, okay, so how do we, how do we not take away? <laughs> <Double your... wrecked. laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> there's a point there though, right? It's like, you're not going to do it. If you tell me I can't get access to my bag because security, they're just not going to do it. Right. So security without actually security shouldn't as it should be as frictionless as possible. Somebody at the beginning of the stream mentioned, you know, there needs to be like frictionless security. I forget how they said it, but there needs to be security innovations to make it easier. So more people will use it. Again, why does everyone use a hardware wallet? Well, you got to buy it. You got to set it up. What if you never yeah. need to do that? What, what if, what if in 2025 or 2030, when you download a MetaMask, uh, they sent you a hardware device to go with it in a hardware mm -hmm. wallet. I, mean, I don't know, like just stuff like that, you know? So I think using, I think you should do, whatever you do in security, make sure it doesn't get in your way or you're going to stop doing it or you're never going to start doing it. So whatever your strategy is, make sure you can still do what you need to do, uh, but also have something in place to help you from wrecking yourself. So that's what I'm like, ah, that's why I don't, when people don't do hardware wallets, I'm like, I get it. I get it. It's more stuff to do. Um, so I think it's on the security industry to make it easier. And uh, crypto is not going away. We got time. Yeah. Yeah. I would say, um, you know, I like to sleep easy at night and if, you know, that was another motivation behind figuring out the security as best as possible was like, you want to feel good. <laughs> you want to feel like, Oh, my, my sack, my sacrifices are safe. My hex sticks are safe. If you really believe in the, you know, the long-term potential of those things. Exactly. So, I mean, the, you know. the anxiety is one thing, but the, Hey, if you're trying to get rich, losing money ain't a good way to do it. So, and I think decide, decide what you want to do. Yeah. And to, and to your point, there are some things that are the individual. So like, for example, if I lived in the hood, I wouldn't leave my bike outside, but if I lived in a gated neighborhood, yeah, I'd leave my bike outside. So you could think of that analogy in a lot of ways of, uh, I don't know. Where are you going to store your seed phrase? Well, I don't know. Where, where are you in an isolated cabin? Like <laughs> on yeah. the top of a mountain? I don't know. Like it, so a lot of stuff as is crypto, it's all self-responsibility. It's knowing yourself, knowing your situation and figuring out, you know, thinking rationally, okay, what, what is going to work for me? If some guy's just like, you have to do this and do this exactly like this. Well, it can depend sometimes. So something to think yep. about as well shout out to simper five scam today for a thousand bucks no how, how did it happen hedron airdrop youtube from emma crypto wow watch out yeah the hedron airdrops you know i got message from a scam alex from Damn. hedron it was crazy it was and so again security professional guy almost i don't want to say i fell for it but i was like I was questioning, is this really him? I was like, I was thought, thought for a moment it was because what they do, they'll message you uh, like a month beforehand. So there's already a chat. There's already history. They'll say something mm. innocent, you know, oh, well, how's it going? Wow. Blah, blah, blah. 
And then a month later, after they've established that relationship that, you know, you've, you've got that familiarity and you actually talk to them, then they'll be like, oh, did you remember uh, to amalgamate your ICOSA wallet? And you're like, what? And I, literally, I was like, what, you know, oh, what's that about? Because I was thinking, you know, back then, ICOSA was a new project. And I thought, okay, is there something I need to do? I don't think there is. And then I literally, I was like, and then I messaged, I went through and I was looking for uh, Alex from Hedron Synergy. And then I found the one that says, we'll never DM you. I'm like, okay. This wow, I was talking to a very fake one, but super, you know, they kind of get you with that sort of thing. So I was like, you know, immediately report scam. I got in the channel and said, Hey, this guy's, you know, scam and stuff, stuff like that. But I was tempted. I mean, I wasn't going to do anything. There's no way I'm going to do like anything with my wallet, but I was tempted to actually like click on the, he, he shared some link and I can't remember if I clicked on it or not, but I was, it was getting close. So I know if I get fooled like that, I can imagine, you know, people, who don't have my kind of background and expertise. It's uh, there's some sophisticated scams out there. Yeah. One of the, uh, the best ones I Watch saw out. was um, there, the ledger breach where people's email addresses were leaked. Uh, anyone who'd ordered a treasure, their email was leaked. Well, then the scammer sent a phishing email that was from Trezor and it said, attention, like we were just had a, there was just a data breach, which had already been in the news. So everyone knew that their stuff was breached. And they said, we're sorry, you know, your data was breached. Uh, so you, what you need to do is you need to download this app and follow the instructions. And it was like so legitimate looking. And that was yeah. the scammers who sent that email. And the app would have then asked you to uh, enter your seed phrase. And it said, hey, you know, the data breach, you got to do this. So like they're, they're very clever. And it's literally like, if you think about it, all you have to do is convince someone to click a button. If I can trick this guy into clicking a button, I can get a hundred grand. Hmm. Like it's a lucrative business. It's an uh, easy choice, so. easy choice for, for desperate people and for people who don't grow up, you know, with morals or, or in bad situations and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. AJ Rip City says, uh, yeah, same guy. I'm telling you, man, that guy was good. I don't know who it was. <laughs> That's the, the, the center. The synergy <laughs> imposter was, was legit. I was like, wow. I mean, I kind of like kind of a little bit of hand clap at the same time, like not cool, but uh, <laughs> just for, just for getting me even involved. I was like, usually it's like, no, I'll click away scam. I know this stuff. I've seen this a million times, but that guy, he got me to like talk to him for a minute at least. Dumb question. Will all my tokens full chain be accessed with the same public address, privacy 25? Yes, they will all be the same exact copy. Um, it's just a network. So it's not like, it's not like your your wallet is specifically. Uh, it's, I think it's that people ask this question because, and, it, and it's a good question. Stuff I'm just saying. the The ideal it's hard to conceptualize how blockchain works, what money actually looks like on it. It's not like your money is actually stored on the blockchain. It's just well, your your keys unlock this piece that gives you access to transfer value. I'm not explaining it great, but it's there's it's not like it's not like you're walking around with a hardware wallet and it's literally got your money on it. Like that's not, it's not what it's doing. And there's a great, a lot of videos that go into how this stuff actually works, but um, yes, everything, everything will be the same. Oh, everything's all getting copied over. All right, everyone. That was the last question. Cause I got to run. Um, ben closing words. What do you, what do you got? The great stream, man. Great, great stream. And uh, <laughs> we got all the yeah, value thanks. here. Thanks for having me. And, you know, I feel like there's, this is really important. Maybe we could do it again sometime. I feel like there's just even more we could talk about. Uh, we, I don't think we even yeah. gotten to the 25th word to a seed phrase. Yeah. Like there's, there's just a lot of stuff. Um, so yeah, thanks everyone for tuning yeah. in. Hit the like button, subscribe to RH Max, of course. And uh, no, yeah. no, no. Sub to Ben Dubard. He has a YouTube channel and Twitter. He is uh, provided right there for you. And he, he makes a lot of great content too. And Oh yeah, it's there's just a ton of different directions. I mean, I've had five of these before, solo streams where I've went into a lot of different topics too. Some of what we talked about today, and some otherwise. So, if you want to binge some of my content, search RH Max Security AMA for the last six to eight months. There's like five of them spread out on a lot of different topics that I go through and I ask some questions from the chat, answer questions from the chat, and all this stuff too. And all those security resources we talked about before. Ben's got some stuff. Pop boner, of course. Uh, and 
yeah, stay safe out there. We do not want you to lose your money. Losing money is not good for anyone. It's not good for the person. It's not good for the ecosystem. It's not good for morale. We want more people to be in crypto and financial freedom, not less. We don't want people to leave. We want them to stay in once they find a healthy, true system is what we got in Hex and Pulse Chain. And uh, stay safe. It's on you. It is on you. You can buy hardware wallets, all that stuff. As soon as you click the link, it just you know, it's game over, basically. So don't click on links. Link's bad. Link's bad. Anyways, everyone, uh, take it easy, and we are out. <laughs> <laughs>